Hey guys, this is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we're going to talk about the three principles of strength training. Now there's a lot more things involved with strength training than just these three principles. But over my long period of training for many, many years, lots of people, breaking records, etc., I have found that these three methods still stand solid at, ever since the early 90s. So let's get to it. The first thing that you're gonna have to do, whether you believe in conjugate or linear periodization, whatever type of training that you like to do, eventually you're gonna have to vary your training. Why? Well, I would say that 75% of the people that get out of working out, not because of an injury, are because they're just burned out of training. By varying the type of resistances, and the type of exercises that you do, you're gonna be able to train longer. And if there's anything that you guys have ever learned from the channel, is the one that trains the longest gets the strongest. So no matter what you do, eventually you will have to vary your training. Most of the times, variation comes from people getting small nicks and bruises and injuries. For example, if I start to have a shoulder issue, I can still squat with a safety bar. It's forcing variation. If let's say I hurt something in my upper back and it allows me to still pull sumo but not conventional, I can still deadlift. If I can bench press but I can't go all the way down and touch my chest, I can use a board press and still press. The point is, is that variation in your training is going to have to happen whether you want it to or not, so you might as well build it into your training cycle. Now for exercises and have constant rotation, if you come on to Patreon or Train Heroic, we're gonna vary it for you in an educated fashion. So let's go to step two. Training is individual. This means that no matter how hard we try, we can't use the exact same training protocol for everyone and get the exact same results. For example, we all know that Bo Jackson never worked out, but was an amazing baseball and football player, but following his particular system on how he got that good is probably not gonna work for anyone other than Bo Jackson. Conversely, we can ride our asses off on a bicycle. It doesn't always mean we're gonna have the capacity to be a Lance Armstrong. Again, we can swim in the pool and use Michael Phelps' swimming philosophies and we may never be an Olympic swimmer. It doesn't mean we're not gonna get some benefit out of the system. It just means that for us to reach whatever elite level our genetics will allow, it's still gonna take some individual training properties in order for us to do those particular things. One of the biggest things that I think training makes so, so individual is past history of physical fitness. If you have an ex-NFL guy, he's gonna be able to train way harder than a dude that has never done anything and just sat on the couch, right? So we have to look at that as one particular thing. The next thing is age. And although training should be done at every age bracket, it has to look a little different per every age group. I would say the big separators are under 30 years old, depending on, again, athletic ability is gonna be kind of a breaking point, 30 and up, and another reason is because usually by 30, 35, most people are starting to have kids, they're having families, those things are gonna change how you train. That's another major individual response, meaning the training that you do is gonna to have to be reflective on what you can withstand in a 24 hour period. For instance, if I'm a pro athlete, I'm not married, I don't have kids and a wife at home, I can probably train a little bit harder than a guy that has four small children, a stay at home mom, and is fighting for the budget every month for the family. So the point is, is that your training is gonna to have to be very individual once you get to a certain point. You can get better as a beginner using cookie cutter things, but as you get into the intermediate and advanced levels, it will be nearly impossible. So remember, training is individual. Okay, the next thing that you're gonna to have to understand is that periodization is key. This means that your training must have some thought process behind it in both what you do today, what you do this week, what you do this month, and what you do this year. Those are all different types of cycles that we're gonna go over at a different time. But the point is, is that periodization is key. You can't just come in and do whatever you think 
you want all the time. For instance, last week I bench pressed 500 pounds with a pause. Now I'm not going to go to 515 next week or they're 520 the week after or, you know, keep trying to progress that. I'm going to work my way up, work my way back down, work my way up, work my way back down. The body works in waves, okay? So you climb, you drop, you climb, you drop, you climb, you drop. That's how the body actually changes. So if we look at this over a long-term scenario, which we're going to go into on Patreon, is that it will look like a straight line over time. But actually, in the training, it will look like a wave. So remember, periodization is key. Individualization is insanely important. And you have to make sure that you're following these principles. I don't know how many people we talk to online that's missing one of these particular types of issues, and then they fi can't figure out why they're not getting any better. A lot of it, in my opinion, is B and C. So come on Patreon, and we're going to dive into this periodization issue a little bit more. Talk to you guys soon, and please visit winningstrength.com.